So this lucid dream I also didn't write down because I'm real lazy. Uh, but I will try to recount um, as much of it as I can. The fuck is that? There's a little speck down here. It mocks me. Let me see. It looks to be on my shoulder, so I'm going to see if I can point it out by l looking at it or there. Now you will suffer with me because I pointed it out to you. Anyways, it started as a normal dream, uh, as most lucid dreams do for me. And uh, me and my sister were on a road trip with my dad. And uh, we were supposed to meet, we were in a hotel and we were supposed to meet our dad downstairs to go eat breakfast. So we were brushing our teeth and whatnot. And then I opened the door to leave, but instead of there being the hallway like I thought there was going to be, it was just our, the room that we were currently in. It was like a replica of the same room that we were already in. Or like as if we opened like a portal dimension type of thing to where it just led into back into the same room like we were trapped there. So I told my sister, I was like, yo, I think we're in a dream right now. But um... Yeah, so I knew I was in a dream, but for some reason I thought that the dream version of my sister was my actual sister. So in my mind I was thinking that we were both in a lucid dream, and as if like she was asleep as well, like in you know the town where she lives, and that we had somehow been in the same dream, which would have been really cool. I've heard of people um, having shared dreams, uh, but it's never happened to me. In fact, I should probably ask her if she had that dream. It's possible. Anyway, so uh, we went into the replica version of the room that we were already in through the door. And we left through the fire escape. And we went down the fire escape and then into one of the windows of the same building. And as we crawled through the fire escape, like an anime girl, like a legitimately drawn cartoon anime girl, uh, followed us through the window. So it was like we entered an anime. And like all the people in the room that we entered were also anime people. Uh, and this anime girl that followed us in was blonde and she had one eye a different color. Actually she had one eye, one color, and the other eye was two different colors. Uh, so that was pretty chill. And yeah, we entered the room and so did that uh, anime chick and uh, like an anime scene started unfolding before us. I think it was just that this family was having dinner and then this anime girl with the one weird eye uh, had run away from home and that this family was going to let her stay there. Which actually kind of reminds me of uh, my sister's situation that happened in high school. So I suppose that's where that came from. Uh, so then we went further into the building uh, and we discarded the anime peoples or disregarded. Discarded sounds like we threw him in the trash. That didn't happen. And uh, as we went further into uh, the building, it started to become like a like a building of business where you would see like people in suit in suits uh, in cubicles and like some of them in their office and stuff. An office building, I guess you would call it. And uh, my sister was, you know, leading the way. Um, I don't know. I guess we were just exploring the dream, and uh, she was actually running really fast. Uh, so I actually had to fly up to catch up to her. Like, I would have to fly up and just fly to avoid the obstacles and then just catch up to her. Because, yeah, we had to run, like, through cubicles and, like, around people and stuff. Because it was a pretty busy uh, office building. And then we got to the cafeteria of the building, so all these people in suits were having lunch. And for some reason, I felt that if we were to get caught, we would get in trouble. So, like, I flew under a desk. Well, I guess I didn't fly under there. I flew over some of the some of the long cafeteria tables and then landed and then went under a desk which I I'm pretty sure is even more conspicuous than just walking normally uh, so I guess I wasn't super lucid like I knew it was a dream but I wasn't thinking as lucidly as I do when I'm you know completely lucid uh, but anyway so I was hiding under the desk and then uh, one of the business ladies came over and was like what are you doing weird kid. And so I was like, shit, my plan didn't work. And then uh, my sister came over and tried to cover for me by saying, sorry, don't mind my brother. He has like um, severe social anxiety, so he has to hide under tables when there's people around. And uh, so yeah, the lady was like, oh, okay, my bad. And so we were able to get out of there. Oh, and then we saw my dad. 
my dad does wear suits a lot because he's a banger. So he fit in with the other people in suits. Uh, and we talked to him for a little bit. I don't remember about what. I think he was just telling us, like, are you behaving yourselves? We're like, yes. Uh, but at that point, I woke up. But I did the thing where I, it's called dream chaining or dealed chaining. D-E-I-L-D chaining. Which is where you chain your dreams together by when you wake up, uh, you, when you wake up from the lucid dream, you do what is called a dream exit induced lucid dream. Which is where you just hold completely still until you fall back asleep and, uh, and you re-enter the lucid dream. But yeah, when you wake up, you have to not move at all. Because then your body will leave the REM cycle mode. Uh, but if you stay still, then your brain stays in the same REM cycle, so you're fine. And uh, yeah, so I re-entered the, off the office building, but we... Or I, I think my sister wasn't there the second time, but I was back in, I was back in the area of the office building before we entered the area with all the business people. So it was just like an empty hallway. So the door was there that I went through the first time to enter the office area with all the people. But for some reason, the door, the hallway leading up to the door turned into just like a wall of an elevator. So we were now in an elevator. I think it was me and like some other people. And it was as if the elevator wall, uh, the back wall of the elevator was a window. No, not a window, a mirror. And in the mirror, I could see the hallway that led up to the door that I had originally gone through. But when I looked back, uh, that hallway wasn't there. So it wasn't behind me, it was just like in the mirror. And this other office dude came up who also needed to go into that, uh, into that door. So I said, don't worry, I got this. So my plan was to change the dream back and uh, put the hallway back where it was and get rid of this elevator mirror. Uh, so, all I had to do was just walk through the mirror. And I had tried walking through things before, but I just ended up like face planning and hitting my, hitting my face against the wall. I think the only thing you really need to make it work is you need to, sounds kind of cheesy, but you need to believe that it's going to work. Like if you're not sure that it's going to work, then you're probably going to not pull it off. But, but if you've already done it, then you know it's going to work. So it'll be a lot easier for it to work. Uh, and I hadn't done it before, but I had to, what I did was I kind of faked it. I kind of faked my believing that it would work because I really didn't know if it would work because I hadn't done it before. Uh, but I acted like I did believe that it would work. And how I did that was I just, uh, walked, walked up to the wall and just walked through it without hesitating. At the same time, imagining it working, like visualizing myself walking through the mirror and it working. And it worked. So yeah. It was, it was kind of like um, a scene from The Matrix. The one in the very beginning where, where they're getting him out of the, ma the Matrix for the first time and they put him in front of a mirror and he touches the mirror and it, comes like a, it becomes like a gooey substance. It kind of became like that. Like, it didn't feel gooey, but the mirror kind of just disappeared and the world distorted. So it was as if I was inside the mirror uh, seeing the hallway and the door in front of me, but the world was kind of distorted, but then it cleared up, and, uh, it was just as if I was in the hallway. Uh, so yeah, it worked. It was very good. And then when I got into the office building again, I found a conference room full of lucid dreamers, and they were saying how this office building was, uh, like a base, and how a lot of lucid dreamers end up finding this office building, and so that's where they, like, hang out and conference. I don't know if they were just dream characters, if they were actual lucid dreamers and if that was a real thing, like what they were saying, uh, which would be cool, but I don't know. If I ever come across that office building again in a dream, then I suppose that would be evidence to support that it is a real thing, but I don't know. And that's where I woke up the second time, I believe. Uh, so I was able to make it last a bit, but I was running around very hectically, which didn't help my case as far as making it long. Uh, I really need to do that. Just take some time to really chill out in the dream and just make it last, stabilize it, you know? Uh, but that is for the future. Uh, for now, that is all. And peace out.